Hi class, my name is Mohammed Prince. This is my week four discussion post. Overview, I'm gonna go over my thesis paragraph and my three themes, which is organization structure, um, staffing and budgeting, and ethics and duty. So this is my thesis paragraph. Um, it uh, goes over the three themes that I'm gonna be discussing. So organizational structure. The organizational structure of the public defender's office is the uh, head public defender who is appointed by the board of supervisors. They carry out the office responsibilities with other, um, a team of public defenders and um, with the assistance of their deputy councils and other administrative and support staff. So when looking at the organizational structure, um, one theory that comes to mind is Weber's bureaucratic theory of management, which is the basis for a systematic foundation of any organization. And it's designed to ensure efficiency and economic effectiveness. Um, another theory that comes to mind is uh, Frederick Taylor's, um, which he felt that by optimizing and simplifying jobs, this would increase productivity. So that's really what scientific management is. Um, Gulick found that under coordination as well as organization, um, so he, he felt that there has to be coordinate, coordination within the organization. And he emphasized unity of command and that each worker should only have one direct supervisor to avoid um, confusion and inefficiency. And um, Follett proposed that one person should not give orders. Um, to another person, but both should agree to take orders from the situation. So that's what the giving of orders is. And then um, Paul Appleby, he found that government is different and that it exists precisely for the reason that there is a need to have special people in society that are charged with the function of promoting and protecting the public business interests. And that government is actually guided by that public business interest. So staffing and budgeting. Um, so the biggest issue in public defense is their budgeting and that, and that their budgeting comes from the federal and the state government. And because of their limited budgeting, they don't have the head count of a private, um, defense firm. So because of that, they have more, they have more cases because they're available to everyone and they don't have enough public defenders to trial those cases. Um, and in turn, that affects their, their legal defense um, quality. And uh, they don't have the time for their clients. And it shows when they give a generic defense to every person when really a person's legal defense should be tailored for their specific situation or case. So that's the biggest issue that public defense has been facing for decades. Um, and whether or not the, the Sixth Amendment right to an attorney is actually being abided by, because if they're not given an adequate attorney and an adequate legal defense, it's just they're just given one for compliance sake. Um, so will it be argued that if the federal government was going to regulate business procedures, then it had better start with its own house and get its own house in order first. And um, Schick found that the budget in the battleground, the budget is the battleground um, for Amer American politics and that everybody fights this fight and agencies strive for more money each year. Um, and uh, this, this comes from the president and um, Congress and within Congress, it um, it's the House versus the Senate in terms of budgeting and um, and Grodzin, Grodzins argued that the government um, resembled a marble cake where the different flavors blend blended together rather than remaining in layers. The, um, and um, he uh, also discussed fiscal federalism and um, and how to divide responsibilities, including finances, among the federal and state 
as well as local governments to improve to improve economic efficiency so ethics and duty um this is where uh it comes into play whether or not these people are actually getting a a legal representation that you know is adequate um, which is what is guaranteed in the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution. So um, these are people who um, are facing, you know, f- felonies and misdemeanors and could be facing a lot of, you know, time in in jail. And um, they're being given a rinse and repeat legal representation. And it's just not tailored for their specific needs. Um, a lot of times they can't even get a return phone call. So there's a lot of eth- ethical implications that's involved with that. So Aquinas stated that the light of reason is placed by nature and by God, and that every man um, has to have God guide them in their acts. Um, and uh, divine command theory, um, it, uh, it says that morality is ultimately based on the commands or character of God. And that the morally right action is the one that God commands or requires, um, as well as categorical imperatives, is commands or moral laws all persons must follow, regardless of their desires or extenuating circumstances. And because these are morals, they're um, they're binding on everyone. Utilitarianism is the doctrine that um, a person's actions, if they are useful or benefit. A majority then they're right um, contractarianism claims that moral norms um, are derived from uh, the idea of contract or a mutual agreement um, contractarianisms are skeptical of uh, grounding morality or political authority and um, in virtue ethics um, takes the virtue ethics theory um, comes from uh, Aristotle who basically stated that a virtuous person is someone who has ideal um, character traits and moral traits um, they derive those traits derive from normal natural internal uh, tendencies and um, they need to be nurtured and once they're established, they will become stable. And then um, virtue theory is primarily, um, you learn virtue theory and moral virtue through habit and practice rather than through reasoning and instruction. So I just wanna say thank you for watching my video.